Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to play my top five golf games and purely based on how many hours I've probably played of these. And I'm pretty confident in knowing the top five over the years because uh, there's quite a bit of a fall off after. Not that I don't play these other games a bit and um, I'm sure there's, you'll see, uh, I'll probably round out like uh, some runners up because... You know, it gets a little fuzzy in, in the top 10, but I, I'm pretty positive of my top five most played golf games. So this is just that to me. This is not the best golf games ever. Uh, so I don't, you know, think there needs to be a lot of debate about this. It's just what I've played the most. And I do want to hear from you guys and know what are the most played golf games by you. So... Because um, clearly some golf games have come out and at a certain time in life you play things because you, you have more time or you get right into that because of maybe it's a new style or maybe there's features or maybe it doesn't have features that you don't like in other stuff. So it all just matches up perfectly for you. It's, it's that perfect you know time and place and all the planets and stars align and it's just the right game for you at the right time. So that's where I'm going to go with this. This is the top five most played golf games by me. And, you know, it easily, not just because they're the top five, they're probably in my top ten anyway. So here we go. Let's start with number five. All right, coming in at number five is PGA Tour by Electronic Arts on the Super Nintendo. Now, this one may have more to do with just pure nostalgia than anything, uh, even though it's a fun game, but I couldn't get enough of this game back in the early 90s. Uh, I think it was the, it came out in 92, so it was probably the summer, but I remember that was, I, you know, I'd had my first job for a few years. I was in my first apartment. After, you know, a long day of work, my routine for most of that summer was to just come home, pour a big glass of Coke filled with ice. I'd flip on my stereo. I'd play Journey's Greatest Hits. This was almost like a routine for months. And um, of course, being in an apartment, you know, I had some 100 watt speakers, Pioneer speakers, and I probably played them a little too loud, but it was my wind down time. And it was, you know, early in the afternoon. It was around 3, 3.30. So I'm sure the neighbors love that. But I turn on PGA Tour for the Super Nintendo. At the time, I had a 27-inch Xena TV that looked gorgeous. I can't even find this thing on the internet anymore. I bought it at a Kmart way back then, and it was just beautiful. I had it inside of a, a faux wood grain entertainment center that used to be my parents. They had upgraded back then, and if anyone remembers like the 80s, and early 90s entertainment centers. You know, you could put in a TV, you could put into your stereo system, you might have knickknacks in it, stuff like that. So this thing was was massive at the time and it just looked fantastic and I had everything I could need in there. You know, sometimes I would pump the Super NES right through the stereo and just get some great bass for games when I was playing. But uh, usually when I was playing golf, even though there was some sound and music to this one, and it was pretty soothing just to hear, I don't know what it is about golf games and just having some birds chirping, it's pretty soothing. But I would usually play some music because um, if anyone remembers the early 90s, I mean, CDs were taken off and I was buying a new CD, one or two every week back then. And I still have lots of those to this day. So getting home, what I would do is I would play tournament after tournament. You'd play four rounds in this and... I know it may not hold up now, but this was brand new. They had the ball cam mode, and it used the scaling and rotation of mode 7 on the Super Nintendo that somehow, just back then, looked amazing to me because you could feel the ball flying through the sky. You know, you, it, it, it gives that feeling. If anyone's ever played a video game and you kind of walk to the edge of a cliff or something, like, say, in... Uh, unreal or something you know and you get that kind of feeling in your stomach that that whooshy feeling like going over a hill in a car really fast it would give you that feeling at at first until you got used to it because you're seeing the ball fly through 
the air and the ground below moving. So it was really great. And besides that, it was it was PGA, and they had already pretty much mastered the feeling and the controls of three-click golf swings. So, And this is early on still. So that's why. This was a great game. You had real PGA Pro golfers in there to compete against. There was like Paul Azinger, Brad Faxon, uh, Freddie Couples. They called them Boom Boom Couples back then. And all of your stuff was backed up on the battery. So your, your, your money totals, pretty sure you could save best shots or it would save a best shot for you. And you'd have statistics and stuff like that to look through. So it just had just about everything. You could you could get through a tournament in a couple of days, you know, playing uh, an hour a day. So that's what I would do. But this game, it holds up today for, for, for gameplay. I don't know if the visuals hold up, but it's still a pretty solid game where if you hit the ball right and you, you, you line up your shots, it's as solid as any golf game these days. So that's why I say PGA Tour on the... Super Nintendo is number five for me. Coming in at number four is Golf by Nintendo for the Game Boy. Now, one of the very first handheld games I ever had was golf on the Game Boy. It was probably out in the first, I don't know, six six months to the first year. And, you know, there was only a handful of games in the beginning. So when golf came out, it was just perfect because now I had a way to play golf portably. And like the NES version and all the future Nintendo systems, it has Mario as the main character. So I think this is really the beginning of Mario Golf before it was called that. The NES Golf game was pretty fun in its own right, but Golf on the Game Boy really leaves you feeling much more in control. The swing meter is not too fast because the Game Boy probably couldn't handle that. It would get blurry. So it really feels like you can nail the shots you want. You can hit those super shots when you first, you know, are teeing off. And you even have the addition now to do backspin by when you hold to the left or right, when you hit in the target zone on your shot, it'll give you a backspin. And it was really a good feeling to shoot a shot just a little past the hole and roll it back in. Um, even if sometimes you'd hit the pin in front, if you were hitting it so straight, it would hit the pin, bounce off, and because of the backspin, it would roll back again towards the hole. So backspin was really nice to use. And what else can I say about this? I mean, it's pretty simple. I mean, it did have two courses too, which was nice. I mean, you didn't have that before on Nintendo's Golf. So you had a Japan course, and then you had a more challenging US course. And the one thing that was uh, tough about it is the wind was very random. You could start up a game and you could end up with some pretty high winds and you were done for right away. You weren't gonna have a great game. I think my best game ever was probably like a 64. I think that's what it was. And because uh, I was just like floored about how how great a round I was having. So yeah, another game where it's got nice, simple music that's catchy and it's soothing at the same time. This is a game for probably a year and a half, two years, maybe more than that, that I would pick up at bedtime and I would play a round of this before bedtime. I had the Game Boy Light Boy, if anyone knows this uh, monstrosity. It had a magnifying glass built into it, and it had a crappy light built in. And, you know, but you could see in the dark. You could turn off all the lights and play, so it was great. But this is this is a good thing. I'd play a round of golf. It would clear my mind. It, it'd stop you from thinking, and then I could just crash out and have a good night's sleep, so... Another one that probably has a bit of nostalgia for me, but I still play golf for the Game Boy to this day as much as any other golf game still. I will play it on an emulator on the computer. I will play it on my my DS. I'll play it on my Game Boy SP, the GameCube's Game Boy emulator. I don't have a Game Boy, regular Game Boy anymore. I mean, I, I just, I'll throw it into something every once in a while and just play around. I, th I think it probably takes about 
20 to 30 minutes. So another game that has a good amount of timing to it. You know, the game, the golf games I don't like are the ones that you play one round and it pushes the uh, 50 to minute to hour mark. That's too slow for me. Um, just not into that kind of kind of golf game. So there you have it. And the number four spot is golf by Nintendo for the Game Boy. Coming in at number three is Mean 18. All right, so Mean 18 is the biggest surprise to me of any game in my life. This game has been out since 1986. I didn't have a computer or a PC that could play this back then. I did not have a video game system that could play this. I think it was out on the Atari. It may have been on the Commodore, stuff like that. Uh, I didn't have that. We had... Um, nothing at the time. We didn't even have the uh, Nintendo. We just had an Atari. I think we had a TRS-80 at the time. Wasn't available on those systems. Not even on my radar. I'm really surprised I've never played this game before 2020. Because 2020, I was just looking for anything that I'd never played in the past. And Mean 18 came up, and I'm like, I don't remember really playing this ever. Like, I've seen it on Abandonware sites, you know, I played leaderboard golf, uh, stuff like that, you know, of that era. But I never played Mean 18, and I'm not sure why. But I started playing it in 2020, and this game just floored me. It It is such a pure, simple experience. I mean, one set of clubs. You can't change your clubs. There's no wind. Pretty basic. The It's got the old-fashioned swing meter that I was kind of already used to because of the bowling game that my brother gave me back in the day. But it's not a swing meter that a lot of people like. But it's a three-click golf game. It's one of the first, if not the first. I'm, I, I, can't, I can't really figure out which was the first three-click golf game. But this may have been one of, if not the first, that was designed back in the day. So to say this is one of my most played golf games, and I just started playing it in 2020, and it's a game from 1986, says a lot. It's the most pure fun golf game I think that has ever been made and the beauty of it is it comes with a free course editor you can make your own crazy course or you can recreate any real courses new or old I've got a good friend Ben now that lives in Australia we chat online only through email and stuff and uh, Facebook a little bit you have got to watch his channel because he does playthroughs and he's pretty good at the game He's been making real and fantasy courses just over the last few years that'll knock your socks off. I mean, it's just fantastic. These are like A-plus quality courses, and he's getting better and better. One of the courses he made is Rose Hill from Australia, and this is the course he says he learned to play on. And it's like been destroyed because of a housing development and it's, it's crazy because it seems like this is a plot from a, like a bad golf movie where the villain wins and the golf course is destroyed. But he's recreated this. This is not something you can go play these days. This is a lost course to history, and he's recreated it on Mean 18. And, yeah, it's it's basic, but it's it's perfectly basic. That's all I can say. You've got to try Mean 18. You can play a round, a good round. You can get through in about 15 minutes. You know, a bad round, you know, you're a little over 20-minute mark. And, you know, once you get used to the swing meter and you understand what it means, it's it's perfectly fine. And it's only on PC. Well, you can play it on the Atari. But I'm guessing that's got limited courses. I'm not sure. Ben has also discovered over this last year or so hundreds of other courses on the old internet. He's dug them up. I found a couple, but he is just, I don't know how. It's like he's got a, a, a mean 18 divining rod for finding courses on the internet. And he's just found loads of them. 
he, he even found a site where there's a front end that I now use because you could only load three golf horses at once on Mean 18. And someone back in the day created a front end where now I can load all the courses. And I now have probably, I am very close to 300 unique golf courses for Mean 18. I'm just about able, if I wanted to, play one different course every day of the year, which is amazing to me. I suggest if you guys want to get in on this, Ben has created a Facebook page for Mean 18. I think everyone that loves golf games and video golf games should go over there and join this group that Ben created and get into Mean 18. There you have it. In the number three position, Mean 18 by Accolade. A pretty old golf game, but a golf game that holds up incredibly well, despite its simplicity. All right, we're getting up there. But now coming in at number two is Lynx. 2003 by Access Software. Okay, I don't know if any other golf game has looked prettier over time right from the incept. Well, you know, at least for each version in its time and day of Lynx Golf, but Lynx 2003 to me has become the pinnacle. And I could say that I've put maybe more time into just Lynx Golf more than any other golf game as a series but Lynx 2003 is the one I've put the most time in since it's come out. And part of that's because you can actually still buy this for $15 at Lynx Country Club online. Now, Lynx always has had visuals that seem like they were a step or two ahead of the rest with every release. It was really nice that they got to the point, too, where they added the ability to put in information windows on your screen. It wasn't just a static. You could you could tailor your screen to what you want. So you could see the ball from the side view, the top view. You can put up your shot meter. Or you could strip that away and just have a nice, clean, super panoramic view of the golf course where your golfer is literally a tiny kind of figure on the screen. I mean, you could even buy a special club to play Lynx PC where you could swing way before Wiimotes with golf on the Wii or the, the Wii U. Sure, they didn't have any of the big well-known courses like PGA Tour has, but that's part of the charm it had. There's a lot of Lynx courses out there that you just aren't going to play on any other format. And it really didn't matter over time because there became a very robust group of user-created courses out there. Like there's Augusta National by Andrew Jones, and I'm starting to get back into finding those again. So even though Lynx came with lots of courses and add-on packs over the years, you could eventually just get a lot of user-created content and, and just have tens and tens of golf courses to play. And it's much more feeling like a simulator when you play Lynx than just about any other golf game in my list here. I mean, it's clearly much more simulator oriented, but it still plays like, you know, just like golf should play. Now, the one downside of Lynx is you may want to set it on an easy setting, amateur or something, because if you have this maxed out, like at the ultimate pro level, you are going to have a tough time if you're not hitting these shots exactly, which makes it very much like golf. You have to be really good because the wind will take it. The layout of the land and the terrain and the slopes, I mean, are going to make the ball take off at different angles. Sometimes you get stuck in a place where you can't even make a shot. I've been in bunkers I couldn't get out of unless I did a total 180 and shot backwards out of. That's that's realism. It's frustrating as hell, but it's exactly what you want from a game when you want something that's probably one of the most accurate golf games in history to make you feel like you're playing a course. You know, eventually they got it to the point where there was online gameplay and some tournament stuff, uh, but I really never play it that way. It's not the kind of game that I enjoyed playing tournament mode in because there were players that were just so much better. You could eventually play against real pros, 
they got a few over the years in there. Um, Arnold Palmer, Annika Sorenstrom. You got feisty little Sergio Garcia in there. I think Davis Love is a character you can get, but I haven't got him, I don't think, on anything. But I'd like to get his character someday. So as far as that, it doesn't stack up with the same feeling of tournament play, like on the PGA Tour for the SNES for me. But this is a this is more of a golf game that you just are playing solo to me and enjoying the environment. I mean, you can really get taken away playing one of these games on a big monitor and especially those ones now that you get some curved ones that wrap around that are large and if you're not too focused on anything else in the dead of winter playing this boy it can take you away and you can almost feel warm again so golf games are great ways to get rid of those winter blues play Lynx 2003 and it's just going to whisk you away to a, a nice fall spring or summer day and because of all that, that's why I've got Lynx 2003 by Access Software in my number two spot for the most played video golf games of all time by me. Run, baby, run! Come out! Okay, so before we get on to number one, Let's just take a look at some of the other games that I've played quite a bit through the years in no particular order. But these are other games that are probably close to rounding out the top 10 of golf games that I've played the most ever.
Welcome to Lee Carvello's Putting Challenge. I am Carvello. Now, choose a club. You have chosen a three-wood. May I suggest a putter? Three-wood. Now enter the force of your swing. I suggest feathered touch. You have entered power drive. Now, push seven, eight, seven to swing. Ball is in. Parking lot. All right, if you made it this far, we're at number one, and that's Tiger Woods 99 PGA Tour on the PC. All I know is I, I remember being absolutely floored by this game and the visuals. Not that they stack up in the same way to links, but what didn't hurt is I had a voodoo card at the time, and this gave you the most fluid, smooth ball cam action I've ever seen of just feeling like flying through the air with the ball while the graphics were just top notch. And it's funny because people will watch videos I've put up of Tiger Woods 99 and they'll look at it and they'll be like, um, how come golf games haven't evolved that much since? And I mean, if you really look close, you see they have evolved graphically. And especially now, I mean, there's even a new version of PGA Tour that just came out. And they even brought back the three-click swing. So this, this is, I'm waiting for it to drop in price, but I'll probably buy that soon. But, you know, this is back when there weren't microtransactions or anything like that. It may have been tricky to configure your video card because you could still play it in the static view where you're 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 hitting off and then you're getting the reverse angle coming down of the ball if you didn't have a, a high-end video card. Or it could do that in a window if you didn't have a high-powered card. So you could still get ball cam in a small window. But if you had a powerful video card back then, and trust me, Voodoo's were the top notch video cards in their three-year window that they were just the king. It looked amazing to play with the ball cam on. Another aspect of it, when you take their swing meter compared to just about any other, it is so smooth to me. I don't know how they've done it. And no matter what kind of system you have, if you have an underpowered system, if you have a really high-end system for the day, or even now if you try and play it, that swing meter is so smooth and consistent. I don't know how they did it, but it makes it easy to play. Now, unfortunately for Tiger Woods 99, if you try and run it with a voodoo card or some 3D acceleration with the base game, you're probably not going to get the performance you want. Fortunately, they've got glide wrappers now like DG Voodoo you can use, and you can see some of that gameplay on my site. But they used to have a patching service that was all automatic. You'd click it, it would download the patches from their servers right into the game directory. And that was pretty great at one time. But now all those patches are lost. And I at one time still had a fully patched game. And you could actually take that. And after you did a reinstall of the system, you could then just take those patched game files and you can move them over and you had a fully patched game. I don't know what happened to those, and it's one of those things where I always hope I'm going to find that disc someday, but I just can't find it. But there's plenty of ways to play it. If you want to get Tiger Woods 2000, 2001, you can get those. They're patched a lot better automatically, and they work with newer cards that were coming out in the, in the early 2000s. And you can still get that full fluid ball cam motion if you want. Also, this is another game where there were a lot of course content that you could purchase. I think the max you're going to get is somewhere in the teens for courses on this, but that's more than enough. And the Players' Championship is just a great course to play. Having the ball cam on, 
getting to hole 17, hitting to that island with ball cam, one of the most intense shots you're going to be able to take, which lets you feel what the pros are feeling, I think. You know, not quite, obviously. We're not playing for millions of dollars here. <laughs> But it gives you that feeling, you know, like, oh, you hit it up and you're watching it, you're tracking it and you're flying with the ball and you're like, am I coming up short? Am I going to hit it over? It's one of the best feelings playing video game golf that you're ever going to have because you're, you're right in it at that moment. You're right there. So when you take all that into account, the great gameplay, a, a batch of just amazing courses that you got at the time. Tiger Woods as the main character. I mean, who doesn't remember being psyched to hit those Tiger shots? Being able to play tournaments against the current PGA players of the time. It also had backward compatibility for a little bit where you could load in other characters from past PGA games. I have loaded all the characters from a senior PGA game that was out a few years before. So I had extra players like Chichi Rodriguez or... Chai Chai Rodriguez, <laughs> as Les Nessman said on uh, WKRP. So I could I could have a good cast of playable pros to play as, to play with, to play against. And if this was a game that had, you know, 200 courses, like I was talking about for Mean 18, it, it would almost be overwhelming. And I don't know how to express that when I talk about golf games because there are golf games where you want more courses and then there's some where it's like okay if I had too many courses I would never be able to play one course over and over and just fine-tune your skills on that one and that is what makes golf games different sometimes mean 18 it's nice to have a, a ton of golf games um, because you're not trying to perfect every shot the same way as you would try and craft it playing, say, Lynx or Tiger Woods PGA games. But that pretty much wraps it up, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope it's making you think about games you've played in the past and not just what are the greatest games of all times, which are debatable, but what games you played the most and which games you loved the most is not debatable and when it comes to golf games these are the top five for me based off of just the amount of hours i put into these games and i want to know down in the comments what are the games that you guys played the most and what are the games you love the most as always i thank you guys for watching and i hope you had a good time and we'll see you next time so long